What's up, everybody? CJ here, back with my friend and partner, Neil Carroll from VidWheel. VidWheel is a video production and video marketing agency. And what we're gonna do right now is a working session so that Neil is gonna help me look and sound a little bit better, at least closer to how he does right now. Uh, first and foremost, Neil, what's up? Thanks for making some time for me. Hey, CJ, yeah. It's it's my pleasure. Happy to uh, to you know talk video. So let's do it. So um, for those of you who uh, don't know Neil, Neil does a lot of great work. I've worked with him uh, for my own business. I've um, I've hired him for to collaborate on client projects, and obviously uh, with the current work from home mandates, it's really hard for a video production company to go out and shoot video. Um, because it's now against the law for the time being. So what Neil has done is he's kind of pivoted and he's helping other businesses and content creators up their level of production quality, whether it be just normal conduction of business or if there's somebody like me and they're trying to make some content um, to connect with people, grow their business, whatever. So leading up to this, Neil dropped a package off at my house and uh, there, the package included a couple of things. It included this microphone, which I'm not connected to right now because I want to connect to it and then we can kind of see the difference. And then um, also this little get up right here. I don't know how easy, there it is. Okay, so this is a ring light on a, on a stand here. And then there's a little webcam and it all kind of connects into here. So there's, there's three major pieces, the microphone, the ring light and the webcam, but these kind of all connect. So it's really like two pieces. And I guess the third would be this little USB adapter because these are all USB based. Um, and if you are, uh, depending on your computer, you may only have one or two USB ports. So that can kind of get a little bit challenging, but this makes it super easy. So I have this set up and I'm gonna go put this back right here. Um, we kind of intended for this to be like a, a working session because quite frankly, um, I'm still figuring this out as I go along. And so are many of other people who are trying to make their videos look and sound better. So now I'm kind of back in the same situation. And uh, of course I am on um, a group text, so it's time for me to airplane mode my phone. So I've done that. Um, and now Neil, why don't you kind of walk me through the steps you think I should take to see how this um, equipment setup can, you know, increase my production quality here. Sure, sure. sure. Yeah, well, um, first, I guess I should let everybody know that we're doing as part of this pivot to just try and help people look as sound, look sound, uh, be able to produce as good looking at content as possible, we're doing uh, free coaching sessions. So we can actually, you know, set up a Zoom call. It takes about a half hour. We go through uh, four kind of different areas. We go through video quality, audio quality, lighting, and staging. So in terms of kind of creating that overall best look for folks, uh, we're able to do that uh, kind of going through those steps. Um, so... Uh, what I sent over to you and what we're going to kind of experiment with a bit is uh, what we're calling just kind of our standard webcam setup. Uh, like you said, that Blue Yeti mic, that um, webcam is one of the most common. It's a Logitech uh, 920. And then uh, the ring light is actually really inexpensive. And I would say the number one easiest piece of equipment that you can get in to, uh, to improve your setup. So number one, when we do the assessments is video quality. Uh, and you know, you, you have the, uh, pleasure of, of having additional equipment, but you know, the, the general thing I'm telling everybody and one of the biggest things that folks can do to increase the quality of their, their video feed is, is, simply get close to your camera, right? A lot of folks like sit way back. Um, that, is that that maybe maybe not that close, yeah. but you know, close enough to kind of fill the frame, right? Um, 
you, when you're sitting way back and some folks like to do that or they've got their laptop way down on their lap and it's looking, looking way up at them, that can be, um, you know, it's just a convenience thing, I think, most of the time. But uh, it it's, it's, uh, could look better, essentially. Now, for your setup that you have there, like that, that uh, distance works pretty well. But you would probably be better served to get your laptop up either on just a couple of books or some other sort of riser. But for the sake of our uh, demo today, you could go ahead. I got a couple, and... I can try that right now. All right, let's give it a shot. And now the ideal uh, kind of setup is that that camera would be at about eye level and even right. maybe a touch above. And that's just from uh, you know, that's just the best practice of inter interview uh, recording, right? So getting that, that camera up at eye level, you know, it doesn't have people looking up your nose. It's a more flattering shot. Like a lot of folks, I put it in uh, a webcam, webcam video uh, that we put out there. Um, you know, if you're if you're looking down, you can end up getting a little bit of a double chin thing going. Uh, you know, it's just not as, as uh, flattering a look as you can have if you have that camera either at or a little bit above your eye line. So, so now I'm really starting to stack, but I'm sure there, you know, if I was more yeah. prepared going to this, <laughs> yes. there could be a box. I didn't tell you about that part before we got started. That's good. Well, we wanted I mean, this kind that... of be like a learn on the fly type of thing. Yeah, does that look, I mean, does it feel any more comfortable in terms of talking and stuff even? Sometimes oh, it, feel, it feels funny. A little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm used to talking. If you're not comfortable talking into a computer at this point, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you got some work ahead of you, right? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not comfortable about like, you know, my hair situation and stuff like that, but <laughs> I'm comfortable enough to, to endure. All right. Well, let's move on to like uh, assessment point number two then is audio. You've been using your computer audio just so we can get a real clean distinction between uh, types of audio that we're going to hear. So if you want to bring that Yeti mic in front of you and really best practice is to have it maybe, you know, just a few, yeah, something like that in terms of positioning, it can actually be straight up and down. Um, it can, can or it should right be. It should be, yeah. You can talk right into the side of that windscreen and that gets you uh, good sound quality. Okay. All right. So when you are up and running and you your mute button is, uh, is turned off, um, then why don't we kick it over? And here's the test I've done with people if you wanna try the same. So is your mute light solid or, or blink? Solid. Solid. Okay. Yeah. And you could even turn that around so it's facing the other yeah, direction, okay, but whatever is comfortable. Yeah. So I, it should stay solid, the mute button? Yeah. That means it's on. Um, so now I'll switch my audio over to this now? Well, try this. So count to 10 and right around the middle, switch the audio over. That's what I've okay. done in some it's of over. my assessments. All right. Um, all right, so while Neil takes care of his kids, I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, I'm not listening, so I don't know if this sounds any better. And Neil obviously got interrupted by uh, Miss Fiona, so maybe when he comes back, we'll we'll try it again. So I think I'll switch it back. I'll hit pause. All right, you back? Your kids, your kids are good. Uh, yes, yeah. All uh, right. No worries, man. Dude, this is this right. is this is what's happening. Um, okay, so sure. I'm gonna count to ten again, and I will switch it over to the microphone midway. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you hear a difference? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good demo. That's why I like to do it that way, right? You can hear nice. a, a huge difference in the the kind of audio quality from the beginning of that that count up to the end. So cool. Yeah. 
so we're going to call you good there. Everybody, not everybody is going to have access to a new microphone, you know, to kind of improve their audio quality. So the general advice that I give folks is once again, if you're filling the frame, you're helping out your mic a lot. You know, if it's, if it's computer mic and you can get, be close to it, it's, it's going to make a big difference. Uh, the other thing is, um, you know, be aware of echo and so on in your room. A lot of times a, a really empty room, any big uh, flat surfaces tend to cause a lot of echo. So you can break those up uh, with anything. It could be furniture, you could chew down your couch, you know, you could, you could do a lot of things that just help uh, with audio a bit. Absorb um, the sound a little bit absorb the sound break it up it's it's all about not having big flat uh empty surfaces that sound can just uh okay. you know, bounce off of easily so yeah all right so yeah no your sounds good and you have you have the mic anyway um uh one of the things too that's come up in some of our assessments is you know can be something as simple as what kind of floor do you, flooring do you have in the room do you have carpet or is it hardwood or i have hardwood flooring but i'm on a rug an area yeah. rug so that's another thing you roll down a rug in that room that you're going to be using for your uh for your streaming or your meetings and that can make a big difference as well so uh number three on the kind of assessment points that we look at is lighting so now's uh, a chance i think for us to fire up that ring light that i sent over okay and um and you could you could switch your cameras uh as well see right? the light first i don't need to do a count up to the light do i just no just do the light yeah yeah that looks <laughs> and, better that definitely yeah looks the ring the ring lights are they're excellent like they uh they, they provide some really nice diffused light. And, uh, but that is also another piece of equipment. So what I tell a lot of folks is if you have a lamp or a desk light or anything, um, it's in, you, you know, try to do the same thing you just did with the ring light, put it right in front of your face. It's going to be way too harsh. So if you happen to have your desk up against a wall, um, one thing that you can do that usually works pretty well is you you uh, point point that um point that light at the wall and that'll help diffuse it quite a bit without having to have any special mm. gear or anything and it'll create a much kind of softer light for you to uh, to utilize there. So yeah, my desk is up against the wall, so I did not consider that, but that's a good idea. Um, when I look, if I like if I look at the light, it's a little distracting. You know, it's almost a little <laughs> bit blinding. But if I'm looking right here into, um, you know, into my camera, or into my computer screen, um, it's not so bad. And I can tell it definitely makes a difference. So maybe it's just a matter of getting used to it or I'm not really sure. But yeah, yeah, it, 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 it definitely is something you have to get used to a little um, if you're going to look directly into the light. Now, I have a situation similar to you. And actually, it's a sunny enough day that my light can't quite overcome it. It's still a little overexposed, a little hot on this side of my face. But with the light on, it it definitely fills a little bit more. And uh, much like your situation, what I did was I actually set up the light offset from where I'm getting a lot of that sunlight coming in. Uh, so you can see a huge kind of difference between with the light on and with the light off and how much of that sunlight is actually kind of yeah. filling um, my my frame, right? Yeah. So that being said, it is always a little bit of a moving target. When it's cloudy, it looks a little different. And I do a little bit of adjustment on, right. on my, uh, my lighting setup and so on versus when it's sunny, when it's night, you know, you get all that. So, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know if you, if you want, you want to, to try the with your try the webcam now, right? Yeah, we can try the webcam. Now you said uh, you said you're not going to be a hundred percent sure if uh, the video quality would be different based on my computer. Right. Yeah. So uh, you have the MacBook Pro, right? I we do. I do have a MacBook that. Pro. Yeah. yeah. 
So the Mac webcams I'm finding through my assessments are, uh, are pretty top notch. Um, you may have better quality built right into your computer than you're going to get through the separate uh, webcam. Uh, the, and, you know, it's a run of the mill webcam, but that Logitech 920, if we switch over to it, it would be interesting to see uh, which one we, we think looks better. Okay, I'm switching over to the webcam in three, two, one. Oh, now I realize I have to look up at it. That's the yeah. other thing too, you know? So it's definitely like, but I mean, if, if this was part of my normal setup, right? I'd probably yeah. bring my chair up a little bit. I'd sit like maybe right here, although I'm slouching a little bit. Um, well, and I would probably it, put it closer to the top of my video screen, I would assume. Well, the other thing you can do is those Logitechs are meant to kind of perch right at the top of your monitor. Mm -hmm. And what I've done in the past, and in, in I'd say in the past, this is just like the evolution since we've moved over to all working at home, um, is you can actually mount that kind of reverse mount the ring light, right? So it is mounted to the bottom of the uh, the webcam, and then you just perch the webcam up on on top. So part of the ring light's obscured by your monitor, but the part that's there still does a enough. pretty good job of filling you in. Yeah. So that would be another another way to uh, to do it, and then you would have that webcam just above your um, your your existing uh, camera, and you know be able to have your normal interaction with looking at your screen, looking up the camera, that type of thing. So, yeah. and the other thing you can do, and I see you already have your blinds closed, but if you, Actually, if you knock well, down, yeah, if you take down the other one, I think that's going to help even more. So yeah, that, that, um, I think with the gear we sent over and with the audio that you have, that's going to be, probably your your best shot if you don't like you know framing wise if you think it's looking too far down you could try perching that uh that uh webcam on your monitor but i think that works pretty well well if you don't um, if you think it's too far down you know it's that was simple to just yeah be here like that feels so there you go. better for me yeah yeah i think that works well um and your audio is good. So, you know, with, uh, with that setup, which, you know, we have posted on our website as our kind of recommended, uh, you know, kind of typical setup, uh, the most expensive part ends up being the mic. And then uh, there's always the challenge of actually getting this stuff, given the current situation. But right. uh, the Yeti mic's like 150. The camera itself is just shy of 100. And the lights are about 30 bucks. So, you know, you can, uh, you can get pretty, pretty good improvement um, for, for less than 300 bucks, you know. So I bought a Yeti Nano, which uh, by comparison really is Nano compared to the size of this guy. Um, and I bought this one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I say that one because it was an investment that I made in, um, you know, the trying to improve production quality, not just in the zoom meetings I'm having with clients and partners, but also because now I'm starting a podcast. Um, so, and that's definitely made a difference in, in the audio quality. I have grown to understand that perhaps the, I mean, it's, it's a company called Blue. The microphone's called a Yeti. The normal Blue Yeti, which I'm using right now, I'm getting the sense that is probably even better quality than the Nano. Um, the Nano was less expensive. The Nano was $100. And this, you say, is $150. In hindsight, maybe I would have purchased the, you know, the normal non-Nano. I don't know what, what you would call sure. that. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty pleased with, so maybe it was um, not the most informed or researched purchasing decision on my part, but at the same time, I'm pretty happy with the microphone itself. So I don't really plan on, on changing that. It's, it's significantly better than the default microphone built into the computer. Absolutely. Um, so that yeah. was good. Um, yeah. 
And also the reason why I brought that up is when I first placed the order, it said I, I was going to get it in like four or five weeks and it really only came in like a week or 10 days or something. So I think, I think on these like shipping estimates, they're estimating conservatively, which yeah. makes sense. Well, yeah, you're not going to be upset if it shows up early, right? Now, let me ask you this, right? Now, yeah. let me ask you this. Do you notice mm -hmm. a significant, significant difference in the video quality between right now the webcam and I'm going to go back to my, now I'm going back to my camera. You know, one of the biggest things uh, that I see on this end is that the, the Logitech actually seemed to be a little better uh, in terms of exposure. I was going to say, it looks like it, well. it brings yeah. in it more light. Yeah. Let me go back to, yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's totally a difference there. Yeah. Um, so how much is, how much is a, 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 whether it's this particular one or, you know, a, a general market webcam for that, that type of webcam, uh, that's about a hundred dollar webcam. So and what about yeah. the ring light? Ring lights, uh, that, that is more of a moving target. When we started bringing these in, they were 20 bucks and they keep selling out on Amazon and our current kind of supply is about 30, 33 bucks kind of thing. So, okay. Um, so all together you're in about, you're in about 300 bucks for the whole Yeah, thing. you're in about 300 bucks. Um, and you know, we have, we, we can provide links and stuff. They're all on, um, the webcam uh, assessment page that we put together, which is just vidwheel.com slash webcam. Um, and there you can see a lot of the videos we've already put up with tips on how to be best set up and so on. We have some of the gear that we recommend there too. And um, we, uh, we have a spot there too, where you can sign up to get one of these assessments if, uh, if you want to, to kind of, uh, you know, max out your own setup, um, get the most out of the gear that you already have in house. So this is awesome. Yeah. Vidwheel.com slash webcam. I'm on the page now. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I mean, I have to say like this, this was really value valuable for me. And, uh, it, I mean, I don't know how long we've been recording. It hasn't felt long. It's been pretty quick. It's been pretty easy. Um, I'm sure that even if I didn't have this equipment that you have loaned me, I would have been able to, whether it be adjusting with lighting or, uh, you know, putting up, I don't know, pillows against the wall. You know, there's probably a lot of things that I could do to sure. fix my frame, lighting and audio quality using just the resources that I have. And then now um, all I have is a, you know, a poor man's version of your microphone, right? But it's still a good microphone, but at least I also have, a better idea of, of what I could do to improve my production quality and, and how much it would cost. So that's definitely right. valuable for me and I would assume be valuable for other people. Yeah, the the assessment usually we come out looking a lot better than we went in, you know? So it's it's a, uh, um, there, there's usually it, it, at least little tweaks you can make that are just with what you already have in place. And then right. there's always, you know, discussion to be had about well what if you invested in in this or that and you can you can do pretty well with it so one of the things that's interesting is not just as people i mean as people we invest a lot in presentation right we mm -hmm. you know whether it be from like how we keep up our homes our landscaping the clothes we wear right like we people do a lot to um, you know, present themselves well to friends, family, and the outside world. I think that really gets dialed up when it comes to business because we invest in, you know, business professional clothing and cars and signage and business cards and waiting room furnishings. And like, think about all the things that businesses invest in, right? To present themselves well. Now, all of that's thrown out the window and we're kind of all working with the same playing field in most instances. And um, even when things return back to normal, it, it's all but certain that we will continue to conduct a greater percentage of our business remotely online. And so um, this is perhaps like the like most 
uh, presentation that uh, a business has, right? The, the biggest opportunity for a business to leave a first impression or, you know, basically build in that level of presentation, it's going to be through these online meetings, whether it's, you know, again, just normal one-to-one meetings with clients or partners, or they're producing content and, you know, doing any other kind of outreach. It seems, it seems to reason that a lot of businesses would do themselves a solid to kind of look into this and improve it as best they can. Yeah. Yeah. And it's easy, easy stuff to do. Right. So, uh, and the we went one step beyond that for content creation with um, with that gear bag that you have is really uh, the rest of it is our our what we're calling our our four K remote studio, which we have clients and so on that that want yeah just just the backpack the other the other okay. version of it looks different yeah um, but we uh, we do the same type of setup that we've done but we use a 4k camera we're just recording through a gopro uh, that allows me to have like a conversation conduct an interview just like this but all the files and every or all the video files are stored locally so that we can uh go ahead and pull that and still create real high quality content for folks who you know want high quality either interview or talking head content nice so that's how it's great. Our, our tweak uh, to see if we can, you know, can continue to produce during all of this. Well, so. one of the things that I was looking at recently, I don't spend a ton of time looking at my website analytics, but uh, you know, I've been in business, you know, full time now for uh, about four, about four months. And uh, I was looking at my website analytics and I've noticed that my traffic is, um, store is, is creeping up and I'm seeing more traffic from organic search and that's good. But one of the things that really jumped out at me was my bounce rates were incredibly low and my average time on site per visit was four minutes, which mm-hmm. is really high. And one of the things that my mind immediately went to, which I am attributing that to is the amount of video that I have on my website. And obviously a little plug, shameless plug for, for Neil and his team, I shot those videos with VidWheel because um, I love using video to personalize an otherwise static interaction on a web page. So if I ever have a product or service I'm going to talk about, I'm going to put that on a page and I'm going to put that information out there. And then I'm going to do a video uh, of me saying, Hey, look, here's some of the things you might be thinking about. If you're considering this service, here's what, what we do well. And you know, here's how I would suggest, you take the next step. Just something as simple like that, a 30 second, a 90 second video like that, I have seen for myself and for my clients has done wonders for website analytics, right? Attracting more people to the website, certainly keeping them and then conversion rates on landing pages. So I'm a huge believer in incorporating video into marketing strategy just because it's better communication. and now my plan is to, you know, figure out how I can in instances where showing people like how to do things on a screen, right? Software tutorials and things like that using uh, screen share capabilities in addition to talking head, as you described, is really going to help me communicate better. And um, I think that I would encourage a lot of businesses to look at how they can leverage that as well. So if somebody's interested in getting in touch with you, so, okay, vidwheel.com slash webinar, they should go and book a free um, web fit or webcam. Yeah. A webcam yeah. consultation. Slash webcam. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe somebody wants to talk to you about something else. How would they go about getting a hold of you? Uh, you know, I'm easy enough to find. We've got contact forms on the page. Uh, you can find me, Neil Carroll, on LinkedIn. Uh, we've got a good kind of active setup there. Uh, or, you know, feel free to shoot me an email, neil, N-E-I-L, at vidwheel.com. And that web uh, address, just to make sure that it's, yeah, that is vidwheel.com slash webcam. Awesome. All right. Yep. Um, and that's where that is. So Cool. Uh, uh, because this was so visually based, I don't think I'm going to push this out to like my podcasting streaming service but obviously going to embed this uh, conversation, transcribe it, and I will uh, include a section um, for people to get a hold of you. So um, yeah, Neil, thank you so much. This was super helpful. Um, 
I've really enjoyed it as well. I, I have some, some things that I think I'm going to do to improve my production quality. And uh, I would encourage everybody else to do the same. Uh, thanks so much, man. Um, I will return all your equipment back safely and I look forward to talking to you soon. Excellent. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having, having me on. I'm happy to try and help people, uh, you know, uh, do, you know, look as good and produce as good a content as possible. That's kind of uh, the direction we're going. We know a lot of folks through this whole experience are going to be either interested in or uh, starting to produce some of their own stuff. And we want to be a resource to help them do that in the best possible way. So awesome. Thanks. Take care. All right. Have a good one.